All the cablegram stated was the size of the fee and that Patrick Conan had a job for me. It didn't say what the job was. The size of that fat fee should have made me give it a second thought. But London is one of my favorite cities in all the world. So not too many hours later, I was passing through Waterloo Station. Most of these people were going to work too, with a difference. They knew what their jobs would be when they got there. Patrick Conlon was a Londonderry man. At least the records show he was born in the north of Ireland. But he lived a great part of his life in America during the Roaring Twenties. He came out of the era with a credit rating of several million and a sigh of relief by the police of Chicago, Detroit, and New York when he departed America's shores for London. Now let's talk about payment of your fee and get you settled and comfortable. Well, first, let's talk about the job. Half the fee in advance is a retainer. Is a retainer for what? Didn't I put that in the cablegram? You know you didn't. But you came along. I like London. I get over here as often as I can. Oh, that's fine. Be my guest. Enjoy yourself. Receive a nice sum for it. For what? Why, oh, I, I want you to keep an eye on my daughter, Patricia. I thought I mentioned that. I'm not a babysitter, Mr. Conlon. I didn't send 8,000 miles for a babysitter, Mr. Adams. Well, I didn't think so. Now, she might be in danger, physical danger. I want you to make sure that nothing happens to her. Well, what makes you think something might happen to her? Uh, a series of phone calls threatening me and my daughter. Why? I don't know why the caller never said. What did the police say? I, I didn't call the police. Why not? Oh, for a couple of reasons. First, Patrick Conlon was never much of a one for going to the police. Well, if memory serves me, the police used to go to Patrick Conlon on occasion. Oh, that's all behind me. I'm strictly legitimate this country, have been for many years. I'm a moderately wealthy, retired American businessman. I don't want to disturb that situation. A couple of reasons, you said. Give me another. I didn't want to allow my daughter. Do you think a private investigator will alarm her less than a police officer? Well, that's all been taken care of through a mutual friend. See, as far as my daughter's concerned, she's merely hiring a handyman for her shop. Her shop? Let's get back to those threatening phone calls. Nothing more to it than that, I swear. Well, you must know who made them. I haven't the slightest idea. Well, what did the caller want? I mean, what was the alternative, the or else? None, except the threats. I don't want the job, Mr. Conlon. I'm telling you the truth. If you're telling me the truth, just telephone calls from a crackpot threatening your daughter, you'd go to the police or hire private guards here in London. So that just spells one thing to me. You're involved in something. You don't dare go near the police. No, thanks. Uh, wait, wait, Adams. I'm being unfair. But I'll level with you now. Now, I, now I've got a general idea who that caller is, but... I don't want to call in the police except as a last resort. But I give you my word, I'm not involved in anything. Go ahead. Well, I, I made a lot of enemies in the old days. Some of them I buried, and some of them tried to bury me. Uh, the caller identified himself as the, uh, the son of an old enemy, out for nothing but revenge. See, when my daughter was born, I, I put all that behind me. I don't want the bad days raked up for either her or the police. Uh, of course, this, this could only be a crackpot, but... Well, I'm frightened. I need you. I need the best for this job. All right. But if I find out you are mixed up in anything, out of bounds, you won't be able to tell Dan Adams from the police, even with a scorecard. card. Satisfactory. Well, what could be unsatisfactory about it? A schoolboy could do it. For that matter, a schoolgirl could. Well, I like this job, and I appreciate it. Don't you have any ambition at all? Sure, I have ambition. 
Do my work right and not get fired. I mean ambition to get someplace. This job isn't going to be any different a year from now, or ten years from now, for that matter, if I'm still in business. You'll still be unpacking ladies' lingerie. And I'll still be working for you. And you'll still be getting the same salary. Oh, the money's fine. Patricia Conlon, Miss Conlon here. Oh, yes, Mrs. Stokesbottom. Yes, your dress is ready, but I'm frightfully sorry, but our delivery man's been under the weather. Will tomorrow do as well? Oh, yes, I, I, I do understand, I do. And I do appreciate your trade. Yes, of course. G goodbye. Daniel, you have to stop what you're doing and take the panel truck and deliver a dress. Oh, I can't do that. Why not? Well, I... Uh, I don't know how to drive an automobile. Oh, for Pete's sake, what can you do? I've been looking for an excuse to fire you. This is it, you're fired. Oh, I wish you wouldn't do that. Well, look at you. Two hundred pounds of man and all you're doing is unpacking ladies' lingerie. I'll help you get another job on the dock or in a blacksmith or something. Why don't you go back to America and play football? Well, I like this job. Anything you want me to do right now? Yes. Yes, I'd like you to go in the back room and stay out of my sight. <laughs> Conlon. How do you do? And what's the idea of locking the door? Got a message for your father. We'd like to keep it private. In the family. My father isn't here. He'll get the message. What's that? It's not a beauty treatment. for the coroner. Did you know them? Of course I didn't know them. Oh, Dan, thank you. What would I have done if I'd been here alone? Why, you two-faced thing, you, you, you're no more a handyman than I am. Oh, well, I thought I was pretty handy. That's what I mean. Well, you took care of those two men. You think I'm a fool? I just told you I liked my job. I didn't say what it was. You knew they were coming. You were waiting for them. No. You're a policeman or a bodyguard or something. I'm not a policeman, and I didn't know why the body needed guarding. Now, calm down, Irish. Who hired you? You did. Oh, I don't mean here in the store. I mean, who hired you as a bodyguard and why? Well, your jaw's not broken, that's for sure. I want a straight answer. I hired the best man on two continents to guard you down. But why did I need a bodyguard? That store alone, for the life of me, I can't understand what a daughter of mine is doing running a store. It's a shop. You sent all the way to San Diego, California, USA, for a man to walk me home? Do you think I'm an idiot? Well, there's a little more to it than that. Your father didn't want you to know, but there have been some threatening phone calls. Well, then why didn't he go to the police? We're leaving the police out of this, aren't we, Mr. Adams? No, I'm playing a command performance at Scotland Yard in half an hour, Mr. Conlon. Why should Scotland Yard be interested? 
until I killed a man, they want to see my hunting license. to go about shooting British subjects, or even grouse. I understand that, sir. I've heard of you. Will you stay on the job? Well, I've heard of you too, Inspector. Heard I'm ferocious, huh? Well, I expected I have to put up bail. Yes, well, it was my first thought. But things have taken a new turn. Up another alley, as you might put it. We've identified the dead man. Well, Carlin rather thought it would be the son of one of his old enemies from the States. No, Mr. Adams, the man you killed was one of our top suspects in quite a large armored car robbery around London, Derry, last year. His name was Joseph Saintly. Looked for him everywhere. Couldn't find him till you put him in the morgue. Do you think it possible, Mr. Adams, that your employer came out of retirement to mastermind the biggest recent robbery in Britain? I don't think your father would consider that part of my job. It was very nice. I knew it would be. Patrick knew I was going to kiss you. I was so mad when I found out you were a bodyguard. He promised me anything I wanted to stop me nagging. Told him I wanted you. And he promised me you for a husband. <laughs> well, if I were in the market for a wife, Irish, I doubt if I could do any better. And I might help Patrick keep his promise. Oh, you're not married. No. Then why don't you want to marry me? Well, I want to marry somebody that I fall in love with and court and win. Well, that might take months. And it might be somebody else. That's right. Patrick says if you want anything, you take it. Maybe, but I'm not about to be taken. All right, go back to your bodyguarding, you great big... I don't know what you are. I don't know one thing. This is one body that's going to need an awful lot of guarding. I knew that the first time I saw it. <laughs> I'd hate to be in your shoes. She's got a lot of time to break you down. I don't think so. You're still on the job. For another five minutes, maybe. Something Scotland Yard said? Something I said to you. That if you lied to me or were mixed up in anything, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between me and Scotland Yard. I'll be investigating you. Stay on the job, huh? Did you see something you liked? Uh, well, uh, if I could just see this on someone. Uh, you're too short, of course. Oh, dear me, I, I really can get no idea just holding it up to me. Daniel, would you come here a minute, please? The lady would like to see this dress on someone tall. Oh, would he? Do you really think he would? <laughs> oh, yes, of course he would. No, he wouldn't. Well, perhaps I could try it on myself, but I never can tell a thing in a mirror. Uh, uh, perhaps you have a dress form. Why, yes, I have just one your size in the other room. Do you mind getting it? It's not very heavy. I'll do that. Thank you. Lock the door.
What are you doing? Come along, quickly. I don't want to have to use this. Come on. They just called. It's time you told me who they are. I don't know that the same person called. You level with me, Mr. Conlon, or I can't help you. Don't let anything happen to her. The Almighty won't let anything happen to my girl. I think you'd do better to ask Scotland Yard for help. The Almighty knows your record. No, they, they said they'd kill if I call in the police. They'll kill her anyway, Mr. Conlon, if it's revenge they want. Only you know it isn't revenge. You've got something they want. Now, what is it? I've, I've never gone to the police. I've always handled things in my own way. Yeah, and your own way's caught up with you. They're playing it your way. Your daughter against whatever it is you have that they want. Oh, you're right, Adams. My whole way of life wrapped up in a package and thrown on a scale. My daughter's my whole life now. It's all that matters. Here's what they want. Armored car robbery? Yeah. I let them keep the silver and the small banknotes, but they weren't satisfied. Get my girl back. Did they tell you how? Yeah. But please don't call the police. Not until after she's safe. Just follow these instructions. says he's going to the police after he delivers that money. You'd better see that that doesn't happen. Inspector had it made up after you called. It's the same size and marked with fluorescent powder. Tell the inspector he can pick Patrick Conlon up any time. The evidence in that envelope's all you need. The inspector doesn't like you going it alone to get the girl back. He doesn't like it a bit. The inspector wouldn't like it if the girl didn't come out of this alive either. No, he wouldn't like that either. He wouldn't like that bit. instructions, I left the money on the bench in the folded newspaper. Patricia Carmen was to be released and would walk by before the newspaper was picked up. I didn't expect it would work quite that way. The main thing I hoped to get was a hostage for further bargaining purposes.
Well, if it isn't the large young man from the dress shop. How delightful. Harry, search him. And fetch the package. Is the girl all right? Never mind. Keep them up. <gasps> Hold it! I don't know. I never did know where they took her. get a doctor when you tell me where the girl is. What girl? What girl? I don't know anything about a girl. Now get a doctor. You. You'll stay right here. No. No. Fisherman's building. Room to ten. You better call Inspector Doctor and get an ambulance. Well, there's another customer over there. Here's the key. Those dreadful people grab me right under your nose and bring me to this awful place. Now look, Iris, there are a couple of points I want to make about you and your father and how you got here in absolute quiet. Now, you're here because you thought it was funny locking me in that back room. Your father's in jail where he belongs. In jail? Oh, you're joking. No. Why? On what charges? Scotland Yard thinks he engineered a robbery, a big one then held out on his partners. My father? That's idiotic. Look, you're an intelligent girl. Didn't you wonder at all why those two hoodlums came into the shop after you? Or why you were kidnapped and your father never went to the police? My father isn't a bandit. He's an old man. He couldn't have got involved in anything like that. He couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't. He... Look, he confessed it to me and then tried to have me killed before I could report it to the yard. Oh, no, I don't believe yes, it. Yes, you do. There was surprise in your eyes when I walked in. <laughs> there wasn't only surprise, Dad. It was relief, too. I heard them talking about getting rid of someone after the phone call. I was afraid it might be you. <laughs> what are they going to do with him now? What, what will they do? You won't testify against him, will you? He was so fond of you. Irish. He wouldn't be tough old Patrick Conlon if he didn't try to stop me from going to the police. And I wouldn't be Dan Adams if I didn't testify against him. <laughs> 